On today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we are doing a segment of a series we like to call The Interviews, and the Beard is going to tell you who we're interviewing today. All right, so today on the on the, on the the show, we have Dave Sestito from, you got that right, right, Dave? You got it right, very good. Good. Uh, from DLS Effects. And so the way we kind of got to know Dave a little bit is we did the Leslie series, um, that Leslie Sound series, and he was kind enough to send us this, which is his, let me get that in frame there, his yeah. Roto Spin pedal, which is a Leslie simulator and an awesome pedal at that. And so that's how we got to know Dave. So we thought we'd bring him on the show uh, and talk to him because this isn't the only pedal you do. No, we've actually got a wide variety of prop products kind of started back in and i don't know how much you want to get into the history do it um 1998 it kind of all started with my daughter playing corn music wanted a distortion and uh i obliged by designing one and uh, kind of looked back at my own electro harmonix gear and said hey you know i could probably design an echo unit and um i designed a unit that i didn't like spent about eight months on it literally on christmas morning in 1998, threw it in the trash. You didn't throw it in the fireplace as a Yule log? I, is, I physically threw it in the trash. Of course, I'm done working on it on Christmas Day, right? So what's that tell you? Talk about a tone nut. <laughs> so um, from there, I redesigned the whole circuit, and I came out with a fairly large unit called a uh, Echo Master. Um, Greg Howe ended up using that on his extraction CD uh, through a friend of mine, Mark, Mark Gifford, that was doing some studio work. And shortly after that, I designed uh, a rather large unit, and I'll see, show you how big it is, called an Ultra Course. Big, oh, wow. big, big unit. Back then, no one cared about the having a Right, big. that's right. Um, <clears throat> so I sent that off uh, with the Echo Master um, to, to uh, my first main dealer was musictoys.com, Teddy Rash. He loved them. We started selling some. But it was evident that the price point and the size was too large. So I decided to design a tap echo, a dual channel tap echo, stereo in, stereo out. Um, and that started selling pretty well through Music Toys. And I had some other dealers nationwide by then. So I got a call from Teddy saying, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I just got a purchase order on Aerosmith letterhead. And I said, whoa, that's, that's really fantastic. He said, yeah, this guy, Greg Howard, who became a friend of mine eventually, uh, wanted to use it for Brad Whitford on tour. And um, shortly after that, I came out with a course unit, a rather large but not that big, called the Course Waves. Um, sorry, Course Vibe. And uh, Greg Howard reached out to me and said, hey, can you do that stereo in, stereo out? So I did the mod. And next thing I know, I was backstage at an Aerosmith concert mm -hmm. with some of my heroes. Right. And, uh, so that was kind of the start of it all, and, and it kind of snowballed from there with different products throughout the years. So one That's, question that spurs for me is, like, what in, what did you do before you started building pedals? Um, I played in a band called Dark Star for many years. We played in the Northeast. We had a record out and were on some uh, radio stations, et cetera. Uh, and then that, uh, <clears throat> you know, I got married, and somehow my martial amps turned into couches. <laughs> and tables and lamps, yeah. So, tables and lamps and all that yeah. good stuff. Right. So, um, <clears throat> so eventually, I uh, began taking courses for electrical engineering, uh, mm -hmm. and th and that's how I was able to kind of do some of the design work that, uh, that that got into this whole thing. Nice. So, I think Jason wanted to get back to what you're currently making, right, Jason? Kind of. Yeah. Well, and so this is full time for you? Uh, no, it's part time. I run two businesses actually. This is about half of one of the business and, and I run an instrumentation company for the other half. Awesome. So what's in the, why do you want to just run down through the current, current lineup? I can pull up uh, the web page. And so we've, we've talked a little bit about the, uh, the Rotospin and we did an episode on that. So I'll put a link in the cards to the episode on that. So people can see that. Um, let's just kind of run down through the other ones. So there's the Versa vibe. Yeah, that's that's kind of a Univibe pedal, and um, what's unique about that is you can control the bass throb. A lot of the Univibe pedals kind of swamp the bass, and you know um, you lose your signal. So we wanted a, a guy named Zil, Neil Zaza suggested we do this product um, back, and I think it was uh, 2009. 
um, so we came out with a with this product. And then, so there's the course. Is there two course puddles? The course waves, and then down at the bottom there was yeah the ultra course. So what's right. the so difference there? The, the course waves is a smaller, a little bit more transparent product, um, and people really like that because you can adjust in and out about the amount of signal you want. The course or the ultra course too is a smaller version of that first course I showed you, and it's a little more lush, um, a little fatter sound. Um, Quentin Gibson uses it from um, Darius Rucker, Alex Lifeson. That was the first product mm -hmm. that I sent to his studio, which he really liked. Um, so we got, and actually Billy Corrigan used it for years as well. Okay. Nice. And then uh, the Reckless Driver. Yes, that, that we came out with in uh, 2013. Um, Frank Hannon really liked the product and used it on quite a few tours. Uh, a friend of mine, Brian Craddock, ended up using it from Daughtry on their, their latest album. But that's kind of, um, it's a dual channel. There's a normal channel and a boost. And there's also a clean mix. So you can set the normal channel up and, and you can mix them on as clean as you want into it. And that feeds into the boost channel. So the, the volume of the normal channel kind of almost works like a master volume and feeds the boost channel. Um, and once again, even the boost channel has a clean mix. So if you want your sound a little bit cleaner, you can clean it up. Uh, there's also an EQ on it for uh, bass and treble. Awesome. Um, let's see. So what else we have? And then the tremolo pedal. Yeah, that's it's about everything anybody would ever want in a tremolo. It's got a normal channel, uh, so you can have the rate knob as um, just regular um, to adjust the rate. There's also a, a waveform in there that um, you can control the slicing of the tremolo, how much on and off you want it, uh, which people really like. Or you can put it into tap mode. In tap mode, you can tap it. It'll recall the last uh, um, beat, so to speak, that you tapped in. And you can also multiply the taps by one, two, three, or four, which is kind of neat. Um, and it's got the standard products. There's, there's also a mix on it that you can have it a little bit more abrupt sounding, or you can have it a little more analog tube. There's actually two opto devices that sound differently, or you can kind of split them in the middle to get the best of both worlds. That's also a stereo in, stereo out, two separate channel um, tremolo, and um, it's got an ex expression pedal input as well. <laughs> so all of these, and I'm gonna flash up here at the bottom the, the website address for your website. Uh, and you'll notice, if you're watching this, you'll notice that there's uh, videos for all these, and many of them have been demoed by Mike Hermans, who's just, you know, his demos as far as uh, letting you see how they sound in the mix and playing, you know, that he does he does incredible stuff. So they all sound great. Um, the the features on them are, are really nice, too. So that that's really cool. Um, when I when you were talking earlier about kind of the history of this, and you mentioned music toys in nineteen, I think it was in nineteen ninety nine. You said you started in that ramp, yeah, ninety nine two thousand type time frame. Yes. So I mean, and I was thinking that's an it's an interesting time because in ninety nine two thousand, I was starting to play in a band. I, I guess it was around that time, maybe a little bit earlier, but. Um, I remember going out and looking at pedals in the internet. It was a different world back then, right? Music toys was the, like, if you wanted to know what cool pedals were out there and they were kind of the, the place to go. Um, and so that was kind of really early on, kind of early for a lot of the boutique pedals and stuff, right? I mean, there wasn't a lot oh, of, yeah. there was full tone that was around mm -hmm. uh, us, you know, boss made obviously products back then, but there wasn't a lot of players, especially in the boutique market back then. Right, because just thinking about who, um, you know, I, I remember maybe like the Tessie Waz back then and like Love Pedal had a couple pedals out back then on Music Toys that I, I remember seeing. But um, yeah, that, that that was kind of an interesting time period. So um, that's cool. So I have uh, a question. So from the time that you uh, discarded your first product, <laughs> how, how long was it until you had one? Because I was going to ask you like, you know, when you're entrepreneurial or you're a creator, there's failures, and you've already mentioned there was oh, yeah. a failure. So it went into the trash, and then like, when when did you resurrect 
And what was the first pedal? Maybe you already said that, but like, yeah, the the Echo Tap was the first yeah. mm -hmm. real product, and then uh, you know we spun a course off after that. So that was the first successful product line. And then immediately, kind of got Aerosmith and others involved, and yeah, it's always good to start, right? I mean, Aerosmith kinda... came on board, and um, you know, next thing we knew, we were working with Rascal Flats. We came out with a in 2004, we came out with a larger rotary unit than you guys have called the Roto Sim. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a bigger unit, stereo in, stereo out, expression pedal input, and um, Rascal Flats was a big user of that. I met a, a guitar tech named Dave Graff, um, who ended up using it with Joe Don Rooney. I met him, and there was another guitar tech I, I met named Bucky, and he was teching for Taylor Swift. Back then, we didn't know who Taylor Swift was. Right. Quite interesting. Um, so interestingly enough, Bucky used to tech for Alex Lifeson. And I said, oh, I've got to get him a course. So we eventually got him the ultra course. And funny story, <clears throat> I kept bugging Bucky. I said, you know, when is Alex going to get back? And um, about four months later, I got this email and said, sorry, this took so long. And I almost deleted and, you know, thinking it was junk. And it was Alex Lyson mm -hmm. apologizing for taking so long to try the product, but saying how much he absolutely loved it. And uh, that kind of built a, a relationship with Alex Lifeson, which later came into play with some some products we designed for him for the uh, R40 tour and oh, wow. along the way. I sent him um, a, a Versavibe, which is that Univibe pedal sometime afterwards. Uh, he, he really loved that. He used it at the studio. He used it on one of his records, too. I'm not sure which one it was. Uh, but then he got back to me and said, I need another one. My son took it. And I love the pedal. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, we've had a kind of good progression of products along the way and, and the pleasure of working with some very, very, very good artists. Yeah, I can actually, let's do that real quick. Um, I can throw on the screen the artist list Amazing. from the website, which is really impressive. Is there any, uh, obviously, if you go to, if you're watching, you go to DSL. DLS effects. I always get that messed up, and I really you do. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> you have DLS Exia. <laughs> right. We, no, we have you know, local delivery. Well, I mean, they're not local. I guess they're all over the place. But for some reason, I knew somebody that worked for that and whatever. Um, so throwing that up on the screen, is there any here that are you want to mention specifically or any good stories? We, we uh, Pat and I always laugh about one of them in particular because uh, we see J Johnny Highland can sell you anything. <laughs> oh, John is a great guy. He really is. <laughs> so, he's know, an amazing player. Right. Yeah. He's, he's so good. Um, any good stories here or anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> once again, it's all through really uh, relationships and love for music and love for sound. And, you know, I went, kind of went out of my comfort zone. I, I worked with a lot of guitar techs. I got to meet a lot of artists. I um, can't remember how I got in touch with, oh, Frank Hannon from uh, Tesla bought our uh, Echo unit. We used to make that unit Echo tap uh, at the House of Guitars in Rochester. He reached out to uh, one of the employees who got a hold of me. So I ended up working with Frank Hannon through that. Um, Frank used my Roto Spin, Roto Sim, Reckless Driver. Uh, my course vibe, I'm um, mm -hmm. sorry, course waves he used. We're going up to see him at a concert. We're invited up. We're backstage and back in the bus area. And I saw this guy named Jimmy Johnson, who was a guitar tech for Sticks. And uh, so I ended up working uh, with them and, and got some gear for Tommy Shaw. Um, and once again, it just it's kind of these these uh, Lifehouse. I, I, I worked with a guy named Bed Carey with Lifehouse, and that's how I met Brian Craddock from Daughtry who's been a great friend and uh, used my gear. He has got his, all the gear at his studio. He's used some on his records. Um, Oz Noy, I work with very closely. He calls me now and then uh, if he's got an issue or, or wants a tweak to his product. And um, boy, just it's quite a list. Smashing Pumpkins, like I said. Um, Def Leppard, we met uh, Scott Appleton, which is uh, Alex Lifeson, old guitar tech. Uh, I did a switch box from uh, through Greg Howard, who was once again um, Brad Witzler's guitar tech. He was with Green Day for a while, and he asked me to do a switch box. So I got to meet some guys, but it just kind of snowballs through relationships. Right. Really, the passion for for sound and, and art and music. Yeah, the guitar tech seemed to be the glue, right? Because even sometimes, if you're watching 
a rig rundown. Sometimes it's the actual player, but oftentimes it's it's the the guy handling his gear. You know, it's the guitar tech. So those guys really know good gear. They're really connected. So it sounds like your relationship with some of them has kind of given you the entree. And then you've obviously done great work because they get more pedals and your success has grown. I mean, that's fantastic. Um, no, you're, you're hundred percent right. It really started with relationships with guitar tech and you know, if it didn't go any further than that, that's fine. They're great guys. I really enjoy working with them. Um, you know, but, but those guys work with other bands and then I find out, Hey, Richie Sambora's use your rotospin. Um, Joe Walsh use your rotospin and Brent Mason's using it in the studio. And, you build relationships with guys like Johnny Highland, who's been a great supporter, great human being, good, you know, great player as well. It's, it's, it's been ama amazing to meet some of your childhood and current heroes through a passion of uh, gear that you love. Right. So which one, so what would be, what, one thing that interests me, I guess, is like, you're building all these, which is your favorite? Or do you have a favorite? Like yeah, the you one you're most proud of, or yeah, the rotary pedals are that's that's my passion. Um, we're working on some new stuff. I just never try or give up trying to improve or expand on the sound. Uh, we're working on some delay products. Uh, matter of fact, Alex Leishman has a prototype of that. So does the guitar player for Daughtry, Brian Gradick. Um, and working on some other uh, more uh, intense uh, echo type products with modulation etc so you'll be hearing from that uh, some of those coming out pretty soon awesome so where you're sitting now is that where the magic happens or is there another spot and you have other people you've employed through yes this venture? yep good question um this is kind of the r d room that okay. i'm in and this is where i lock myself away <laughs> i do have some people that help me we also have a uh, we share some space in the twenty three thousand square foot building where some of the products packaged and shipped out of um so it's actually kind of two locations there's the brainstorming and then there's the the build areas so a quick follow-up question are do you go to nam do you go to anaheim or, or Nashville yeah we or? yeah we did we did, we've gone to a couple of nam shows but um we've, we've kind of been passing lately and just mm -hmm. busy trying to create some new products and, and get things going so but i heard it's pretty you know it's pretty expensive to be there and, and you've already got a really impressive network um yes yeah. even sharing even sharing a booth um the last time we went we went to nashville and uh, johnny highland uh and premier guitar uh did a little demo on our rotospin which is really cool yeah because uh you mentioned frank hannon uh we've become friends with the guys from cr alsip who have made guitars for him oh yeah and so, as an FYI, sometimes they're looking for someone to split a booth. So <laughs> there you go, right? There, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So one question that we talked about this interview series, and as the guy who's the creator, the guy who's setting the course, what is it that you spend your time on? Like, what what is it? What is the thing? Um, <clears throat> it's really working on prototypes and um, different design aspects trying to to uh, a lot of things have gone digital we've tried to remain um as analog as we can uh, mixing in some digital processing kind of almost like a hybrid so a lot of my time is spent on the r d on the front end organize things to be built quoted and um and out to the public uh, once again price pressure size is a lot different than when we started so right. we're, we're very cognizant of that yeah, one other question go ahead jason sorry i was thinking about that um right now we have this almost like pendulum swing it seems like towards digital right towards like the modeling amplifiers and silent silent stages and stuff like that and was wondering how that affects what you do and you know you, you did you just kind of mentioned that you know trying to stay analog and then adding in some of the digital components i guess that would be more like your controls right your, your taps and things like that but having the core so like on the vibe pedal is that still like a photo cell? Um, <clears throat> the Vibe is optical. That's a pure analog product, right? There's four opto devices in there um, to recreate that unified sound. Okay. Uh, but some of the other products, they use a blend of analog that your your main signal always stays analog uh, through op amps, and we want to make sure it matches the bypassed tone of your instrument, and then we blend in the hybrid processed 
uh, signal and filter it in such a way that it, it's, a, like, it's more of a hybrid than it is a digital. And a lot of the digital stuff is DSP 24 bit. We do things a little different and um, you know we're happy with the outcome and, and hopefully the players are too. Yeah, I would say so. Well, so one one that I've got to play with, yes. <laughs> yes. Thank, you. Thank you. One question slash comment. I, on the episode that we did about the, the rotary pedal, you know, we always joke that we take out the instructions and we just kind of toss them, right? But yours was great. I think I said it would look like it was done on the Declaration of Independence. But <laughs> you did. <laughs> Parchment paper. <laughs> yeah. Spare no expense, right? But it was interesting because we're like, well, we set it up the way that we thought it would sound. And we tried a few of Dave's settings, but I'm like, I don't know what Dave plays. So you talk about playing in a band. So what is the genre that you prefer to play? And do you still actively get to play? Uh, I play some. Um, the, the genre is kind of back to the old Rush sound. I mean, a lot mm. of our original music was uh, in the Rush UFO um, era. And mm -hmm. uh, so that's the kind of music I like to play. Uh, don't have as much time anymore, obviously, trying to run two businesses. But Right. It's so that, interesting that that was what you like to play, and then that's one of the guys that you really yeah, hooked right, up with. Right. That, that's awesome. We used to cover some Rush songs. Never, ever, ever imagined I'd meet Alex Lifeson and Geddy Lee and, and be invited to shows, I think three or four shows now. And uh, to meet those guys, it's been really an honor. Did they give you one of the big top hats where the big rabbit blew up out of it? <laughs> <laughs> those things were great. Quite. Still working yeah, I've, on. I've seen them a number of times. They're amazing to watch. They really are. So outside of running two businesses, do you have any hobbies, anything that you kind of blow off a little steam or? Yeah. Um, you know, I fish now and then, if you could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> but mainly play music and, uh, you know, family and, and run the businesses, which I consider my families as well. So Right. Sounds like it after since 1998. And that artist list, I'm sure you've become friends with many of them. And as you said, the guitar techs and other peripheral people in the business. It's, yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's funny because I know I, being an educator, I talk to my students a lot about, you know, future. And if you can find something to do in the future that you, where you wake up every day and you're loving what you do, you're really, you know, you're not working. Right. So it's not surprising that that this, you know, maybe is kind of a hobby and, you know, like that, that marriage, of, um, I don't know, I'm trying to not saying it very well. I guess the pressure of yeah, the you can do what you love. You have a passion for it, and mm -hmm. you can make some money from it. Those are all right. good. Right, right. And make other people happy. It's always got to be a win-win. What are your other hobbies? I don't know. I go hang out with the rock stars that I've. <laughs> do I need other hobbies? <laughs> yeah, one of the benefits we haven't paid for concert tickets in a long time because we That's usually good. are invited up. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, you may you may get to view the concert from the side or the back, but I would take that view any day over. A yeah, yeah. Scene. Actually, you learned that being out front is better. <laughs> you can't hear it very well. From right, the right. Side, so that's great. Right. So, you have any other questions, Pat? I'm looking at the time. We're running about twenty yeah. minutes right now, um, which is probably a great <laughs> a great amount of time for for the attention span of most of our viewers, and myself included. Um, do you have any other questions, Pat? Or I don't think so. I actually, shockingly enough, jotted some down, and I think over the course of this conversation, we hit on the ones I wanted to ask. Right. Is there anything uh, that you wouldn't want to add, Dave? Yeah, I just want to say thanks to uh, to you, gentlemen. Uh, you guys really do a good service. You share the passion for sound and music and art, and uh, I think you do people a great service. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. Like, like I said earlier, I mean, we're, it's it's kind of. The, it's just for fun, right? You know, it was yeah. Pat and I, when this started, we're kind of like, wouldn't it be nice to do something for ourselves that's not like working for somebody else that we enjoy, that we could take some pleasure from, and then would be maybe be beneficial. So the opportunity to have conversations with people like yourself has been just amazing. So uh, we, can't, we can't tell you how much we appreciate you taking the chance and sending us the pedal and letting us do the review and taking some time to talk with us here today. So I'm glad I didn't look at your artist page before we reviewed the pedal because I wouldn't have played at all. <laughs> 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 We've just been turning knobs and watch lights flash with no sound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, no, it's all good. And I, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Well, I think with that, uh, please subscribe to the channel because we're going to have some more interviews coming up and 
Uh, stop by Instagram and Facebook and make sure you go out and check out uh, the website here for DLS effects. I'm going to pop that up on the screen one more time while I'm talking here. I'm stalling. <laughs> um, Vamping. Yeah. Oh, wait, it was still up. Okay. So there's the website. Make sure you stop out and check them, follow them, look at the products that uh, Dave has because it's some great stuff. And with that, Pat? With that, I am, where am I? I'm here. I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard. Reminding you, no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear.